Hey guys, it's Christopher with Action Figure Fury here. And it's Anders with Action Figure Fury as well. And we've got some figures from the uh, DC Comics Batman Animated Series and the new Batman Adventures line to review. We got Clayface, Bullock, the Joker, Firefly, Talia, and a anti fire suit Batman. Now, the cool thing is, is they're kind of set up. We got three figures from the animated series and three from the new Batman Adventures. And so we're going to kind of split those up. I'm going to go ahead and take Clayface, Bullock, and Talia. Those are all from the animated series. And then I'm going to grab the Joker, Firefly, and the Anti-Fire Suit Batman, which all come from the new animated Adventures of Batman or something like that. I'm not as familiar with that one. But the figures look really cool, so I'm pretty excited to see what they've got. Yeah. So basically I'm figuring um, we're going to do two different reviews. So watch both videos, guys, and let us know what you think in the comments. All right, so we're going to take a look at the packaging, starting with the anti-fire suit Batman here. As you can see, it's pretty simple clamshell packaging that's attached to a cardboard blister backing with glue. Uh, this is the new Batman Adventures, so you've got the logo here that serves as the primary image for the backer. Flip it around to the back, same image, slightly different. You've got some legalese across the bottom. Uh, back on the front, you can see on the sides, uh, they give you the name of the figure and some information about its place in the series uh, on both sides. And then on the bottom, you've got a little bit more legalese. Uh, and then the clamshell is open on all three sides to give you a good view of the figure and the accessories that it's coming with. So that's Anti-Fire Suit Batman and the Joker and Firefly are much the same. You can see the that same open packaging, uh, same image on the front and back. And one thing to be aware of is that with this packaging, uh, there is a little bit of damage that you can get in shipping. It's got some uh, bent corners as well. And here you can see it's starting to kind of pull away in the middle of the cardboard backing. But, in general, this style of packaging and the lower price of these figures means that most people probably aren't going to be collecting uh, these figures as, um, you know, big-time collector's pieces, and so the packaging might not be as important for them. Now, all in all, I actually like the packaging. I like the simple nature of it. I don't mind that they're kind of reusing the image front and back. I think it gives it kind of just a nice, simple look. My only gripe is that I actually would prefer them to use uh, resealable packaging versus this being glued to the cardboard backer. I'd like the option to be able to put the character back in packaging or even possibly use the packaging as part of a display piece too, but with this kind of glued clamshell, you're not going to get that. Otherwise, uh, especially for the price point, I think the packaging is pretty nice. All right, so we're going to take a look at the figures now, starting with Firefly. Let's take a look at his sculpt and his paint. As you can see, both of them are pretty simple. There's not a lot of color going on. you got some red in the eyes. you got the black of the eyes and also of the harness that goes around the figure. And then you've got some sort of tan, sort of uh, more brownish tan for both his gloves, for the uh, attachment on his back, and then for his feet. So uh, paint-wise, it's really nice because all the lines are very well painted. They don't spill. There's no spill, for example, between uh, his gloves there and the arm. And the same is on his boots, you know, very crisply painted. And also on the harness itself, you can see the lines never really spill over onto the body. Uh, Sculpt-wise... They've included some cool details like his little antenna here and the eyes themselves are nice. Um, and this piece here is not removable. It's actually part of the figure itself, as is this harness. Now the harness is flexible, uh, this belt part of it, and it's not directly part of the body sculpt, but it also can't be removed. One small thing I noticed is just in moving the character around and kind of checking things out, this piece has started to pull away a little bit. Uh, I would have liked a little more reinforcement there because especially if you're going to be moving the character's legs, you don't want that holster to break. Overall, very nice sculpt. Uh, it's very well done. It's solid. 
it feels like a, a pretty uh, pretty cool figure you know they've got some nice details in there for example they've got this zipper here that kind of makes the other lines in the figure look like they're part of the suit rather than articulation joints and so that's kind of cool overall very nice look and the paint is really well done high points there all right so now we're going to take a look at his articulation as you can see here the head can spin 360 degrees and it's got just a little bit of up and down which is nice to see that there's a little bit of neck movement there for the arms the shoulders can come out to almost uh, 180 degrees and then as you can see there's a full rotation on the uh, joints and that's also the case with the elbows the elbows do have about 90 degrees of articulation where you can kind of flex them up like that and then the hands also have that 360 degree rotation and there's a little bit of up and down movement you can get from the hands but not a lot so all in all that's i feel like pretty solid articulation for the arms that should allow for some decent poses especially with some of the ch the uh, interchangeable hands that come with the figure uh, no ab crunch but the figure does feature again 360 degree rotation at the torso for the legs they have a side to side articulation that's not quite van damme level i don't think firefly would want to get in a split off with Van Damme, but it's pretty impressive, especially given that he's wearing a suit. Pretty flexible material, I'm guessing. The legs also can go front and back articulated a pretty decent amount. You know, he's got, you could get some good uh, jumping poses or something like that there. And then the knee joints themselves We'll go back, not quite 90 degrees, so you've got a little bit, and there's no forward articulation on the knees, just back. Uh, Leg-wise, the legs themselves also pivot 360 degrees, and the ankles have a little bit of up and down articulation, but no side-to-side -side articulation. So all in all, uh, I feel like that's a pretty solid amount of articulation, especially for a character of this price. The joints are all a little bit stiff, so you'll want to be careful when you're moving them around that you don't put too much force on them. But they do hold pretty well, and uh, all in all, I think it's a pretty solid job of articulation. All right, so now we're going to look at the accessories that come with Firefly. As you can see, he comes with a couple of pamphlets here. Neither of them are specific to the character, and one of them just serves as a sort of advertisement for some of the other figures that you can get in the new Batman Adventures and animated series line. And the other is just an illustration of how to use the figure stand and how to attach some of the pieces. So nothing too incredible going on there. The figure stand itself, as you see, is stamped with the image of Firefly, which is pretty cool. And then you've got three sets of interchangeable hands, bringing the total number of hands to four sets, including the fists he comes with. And then you've got his gun here. Now on the gun, if you'll notice, the paint job is very well done, as with the rest of the figure, where uh, the paint is not spilling between the black and the blue on it. Uh, again, really nice that they put that much effort into the paint. Now hands, you've got some fists here. And these are not for the gun, or at least they can be used uh, for the gun, and I'll show you that in just a second. But they look more like they're for grasping other objects, other accessories you might have for the figures. Uh, the gun hands, as you can see here, actually have a trigger finger and a grip to hold the gun. And that works pretty simply, I'll show you. Let me swap out for the other gun hand here so we can see that. Uh, it goes in pretty easy, just into the actual hand itself. And then you rotate the finger into the trigger, and then you, there you go. You've got yourself the hand holding the gun with the trigger finger. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you can use the hands, the grip hands, if you want. So you can kind of slide another hand onto the barrel there. And then you could have like a double-handed grip on the gun as if Firefly is getting ready to go into battle for Batman. So that's one possible use for those hands. And then in addition to the two holding hands, 
He also comes with a set of open hands that are kind of just your traditional open palm hands. And, you know, they might be good for high-fiving other villains when they uh, defeat Batman. But that is the accessories. Oh, one more quick thing to note. He does have the holster on the side, which holds the gun. And you can see there's a little separator so that when you slide the gun in, the barrel is separated by that little spacer. Holds the gun quite nicely. All in all, it's a pretty good loadout. Nothing, you know, there's not a lot of accessories, but they're pretty cool, especially for a figure that's in this price range. So I think they did a pretty good job on the accessories. All right, now we're taking a look at anti-fire suit Batman. We're gonna start with the paint and the sculpt. Paint's pretty simple on this character. There are literally three colors, including, as you can see here, the whites and the eyes. Now the white is really well done, doesn't spill over onto the rest of the figure. And the blue is also very well done. You may be able to see there's just a tiny little spot right there where the uh, black spills onto that blue, but that's the only place on the figure I can find that. Otherwise, you look at the hands here, and you've got those cuffs on the hands and legs that are both that kind of blue with the black lines, and they're very well done. I couldn't find any spill. The belt is nice. Overall, solid paint job, even though it's simple. Now, sculpt, uh, I've got a little bit of an issue. From a technical angle, I feel like the sculpt is fine, and it's got that nice kind of weight that these figures have, so it, you know, feels kind of substantial, but... If you look at the figure here, he's got these really long legs, and then he's got like a much more compact torso. And so it, it gives him like way more leg than I think Batman actually has. And if you look at him from the side, these legs, they're like cheetah legs. You've got the thighs coming down and they go to a knee and then suddenly it's like, ba-boom, there's calf right there. And the way the legs are oriented, it's like, you know, it looks like Batman's ready to chase after a gazelle and tackle him, you know? He's going hunting or something like that. It's just weird. I don't know why, but those legs just strike me as weird. And if you look here at the arms, he's also got these massive arm muscles right after the elbow joint. So all of a sudden there's like this huge muscle that comes right after that that kind of it just makes the arms look a little off too. So he's got this really big upper body and these big arm muscles, and then he's got these cheetah legs, and they're these really long sort of graceful legs, and it just gives the whole figure a kind of conflicted sculpt. And so, I mean, technically it's solid. They did a good job actually putting the figure together, but I feel like they could have come up with a slightly more accurate design, something that it feels almost like they married the lower half of, like, Batgirl to, like, the upper half of Batman or something like that. But anyway, paint job, really well done. Sculpt, feel like it's just a little off. Let's uh, take a look at the articulation for the figure. Before we get to that, I just wanted to clarify on the sculpt a little bit. I understand that the sculpt's representative of his look for the new Batman adventures. I just don't think the look suits Batman as well. It's just a little off for me. Anyway, articulation. Like the other figures, he's got a full 360 degree rotation on the head there. And he's got just a little bit of up and down articulation, not a whole lot for the neck. His arms rotate 360 degrees at the shoulder, and you can get some articulation there, but they don't go quite up to like the 180 degree level, so it's a little bit limited. And you also have to really strain the arms because they're pretty stiff, and if you'll notice, that shoulder joint kind of the blade kind of meets the top there and makes it hard so I wouldn't suggest trying to stress that too much. You've got his elbow joint here which you can't quite get a 90 degree out of and that weird muscle keeps it from going at all this way. So you've got a little bit of articulation but not a lot. It rotates 360 degrees like the other joints, and his hand rotates the 360 degrees as well. Not much back and forth articulation on that joint, mostly because of the cuff here, which really kind of keeps the hand from having that movement. He does have a 360 degree rotation on the torso, no ab crunch, but it is nice that he's got some torso rotation. The belt, it might give you a little bit of trouble because it's attached to the figure right there, but it is kind of nice because it covers up that torso joint and makes it look kind of like a more uniform character, so that's cool. Leg articulation-wise, 
He does have some side-to-side -side split articulation, not as, as much as some of the other characters, but still it's a pretty decent amount. And he has a surprising amount of forward and backwards articulation. He can almost go a full 180 degrees out from the front and the back, which kind of gives you more of a, that feel of the springing cheetah again, if you want to keep with that hunter motif. And then, as you can see, his knees also have some decent articulation. You can go almost a full 90 degrees back, where a lot of the other figures in the line aren't quite that articulated on the knee joint. Now, he's got the 360-degree uh, rotation coming just below the knee joint, uh, above the cuffs on the leg. And then the feet themselves have that back-and-forth articulation, but there is no... Uh, there is no side to side, and the feet themselves don't turn just up here at the joint above the cuffs. So all in all, I'm a little disappointed by the shoulder articulation and by the arm articulation. I feel like they could have done a little bit better there, but I like that the figure does have the torso rotation and the legs, uh, you know, having that surprising amount where you can get them almost all the way up on either side and some decent knee articulation with uh, some on the ankles for posing. I feel like they did a pretty good job and the figures uh, got some pretty good movement overall. All right, now we're gonna see what accessories we get for the anti-fire suit Batman. As with the other figures, he's got these little uh, pamphlets here. This one provides some advertisements for some of the other figures in the line. And this one shows you how to use the stand, how to attach some of the pieces. As with the others, neither of them is character specific. Uh, they're included with all the figures, so you're gonna see the same thing from each figure there. Now they do have a stand, and in a nice touch, they stamp the stand with the anti-fire suit Batman. So you know it's a, uh, his particular stand. And they gave him three sets of interchangeable hands. You got gun hands here for holding the gun that he comes with. And you see you got a trigger finger and you got the grip and everything there. And then you got yourself just a more uh, grip-like hand here if you were to hold like a club or a pole or some kind of implement like that. And then you've got the more open palm hands here. And then that's all in addition to the closed fist hands that come on the character giving you four total. And then you've got his gun here. Now, while the gun accessory has a decent sculpt, I feel like it's a little bit weak for them to give it an, an, the same color all around. It's all blue like that, especially given that they were willing to paint two colors onto Firefly's gun and give it that kind of black and blue. This just feels a little bit weak, like they were trying to cut a corner here and save a little bit. I would have appreciated a little more detail on the paint for this. Uh, the sculpt looks okay paint needs a little bit more now let's take a look it's pretty as with the other guns it fits into the hand pretty easy and then you just pop in that finger into the trigger and it looks good you know it's it holds the gun very solidly it's not going to fall out it's nice so they did a good job with that and those are the accessories that this figure comes with all right now we're going to take a look at the joker I feel like the Joker is kind of one of the best ones of the ones we got. I think they put a lot of effort into making this figure very cool. And I think a lot of that effort shows in the paint and the sculpt of the figure. Sculpt-wise, you can see he's got a very cool kind of angular face. He's got that maniacal grin. He's got his traditional purple tuxedo and they gave him a nice bow tie. Gave him a, you know, a very cool stylized hair. And they also sculpted the, um, the jacket that he's got to be kind of a softer plastic layer to the rest of the figure, which is really cool. And then on his shoes here, you can see they've got a kind of blue overtone to sort of nice dress shoes that they carry out of the bottom. And you've even got a little texture to the bottom of the shoes. Overall, the sculpt work on this is very cool. Paint-wise, they also did a fantastic job. You can see if you look at his face here, 
He's got that yellow in the teeth that doesn't spill over. You can see there's just a little bit of black on his flower, but otherwise they contain that really well. There's a tiny bit of spill off the bow tie, still fairly precise. His eyes are great. They've got that black, and then you can see the pupils there. And you've also got the hair with that very clean stripe that goes all the way from side to side. And they did a great job just making sure that that color all stays contained. Uh, you can see also on the feet, again, that paint, that blue that they had, very clean, moving across the shoes. And just all around, even on the lighter purple that they use on the hands, you can see there's just a little bit where it kind of doesn't quite get on some of the joints, but they've got kind of a nice gray cuff there. All in all, just a great job on the paint. Like, they really came up with a good color scheme for the character and then did a great job uh, working that paint out. And I'm a fan of the sculpt. I think it looks nice. It uh, gives the Joker a very Joker-esque feel and look. So that's the Joker, and now I want to take a second to look at his hyenas. So his hyenas, oh, Joker down. Let's go ahead and throw him onto the stand there to help him up. Take a look at his hyenas here, and you get two of them, and one's got the kind of closed sneer mouth, and one of them's got that kind of open laughing mouth. And again, they did a really good job where you can see the teeth and the, the mouth inside have separate paint, and they've got those black spots for the eyes and then the pupils and the nostrils. You got that red color, and it's all very clean. I like that they just put a lot of effort into just getting crisp paint. And then if you'll notice, there's some nice texture on the sculpt where you got like a little bit of hair kind of right up here, and these bumps, and you got kind of this ridge of hair, and then you got a brow line for the hyenas and the airs kind of sticking up like that. Just all in all, very cool. I really like the job they did on the paint and the sculpt all around for this set. So I'm high marks here. I think this is a great job. All right, we're gonna take a look at the articulation for the Joker and his hyenas now. Let's start with the Joker. Now, I'm gonna start with his head because this represents some one of the really surprising bits of articulation for this figure. Unlike a lot of the other characters where the head movement, you get that 360 degree rotation, but that's about it. This figure does have that 360, but look at how crazy you can go side to side with the head and up and down and all around and so you can get some really great kind of crazy maniacal poses out of the Joker which is really suiting for his character. I love that they figured out a way to give him just really cool head articulation. Uh, even more impressive when compared to the other characters in the line. Now his arms actually come out to almost a full 180 degrees and, if, and then like the other figures they do have that full rotation, you'll want to probably pull the arms down just a little bit when you rotate, otherwise it's a little stiff. He does have the 360 degree rotation for the elbows, and he's got a little bit of elbow articulation, not quite as much as some of the other characters, but there's still some flex there. And there's not much movement side to side for his hands, but he does have the 360 degree rotation for the hands as well. Now, his legs are also a little bit surprising, because wow, that guy can do the splits. Got some crazy splits action going on right there. Even more than a full 180. And he does have some good front kick action. His back kick is a little bit limited by his jacket, so you're not gonna get a lot of back right there because it runs into the sculpted jacket here. But that's a pretty decent amount of front movement. And then his knees, you get almost 90 degrees, which is nice. You get down to his feet, and it's a little disappointing because he doesn't have any ankle articulation. There's there's a, just a tiny amount of up and down, and that's it. And then he's got the 360-degree rotation. So that's cool that he's at least got that rotation, but he's got the cuffed legs here, which really keep him from having any more movement. So that's a little disappointing there. But otherwise, I think they did a pretty good job with the articulation. I love the extra movement you're getting out of the legs. And that head is crazy awesome. Like, that's going to allow for setting up some pretty cool scenes, you know. I like that, that he's got that articulated head. And I, I figure, you know, if you're going to give 
one of the characters that had movement, the Joker's a good choice. So let's take a look at his hyenas now. I'm going to use this uh, this guy here to kind of show you the articulation. It's the same for both of these figures. They've got heads that are able to move 360 degrees rotation, and you got just a little bit of side-to-side -side movement there and some up-and-down movement. So it's it gives you some uh, good posing. You know, you can kind of get some cool stuff there. They've got their legs, good front and back movement. Uh, the legs can kick all the way back like that very easily. Now, technically, you can actually rotate these legs all the way around 360 degrees. You can also do it with the front leg, but because right there where you're kind of seeing the hinge meets, it makes it a little bit tough. And I wouldn't recommend doing a lot of 360 rotation there just because uh, it's a little bit tough and you might, you know, you might kind of bend the characters a little bit. The last little piece here, these tails do have rotation to them, which is cool. I like that they added in just that little touch of having, you know, you can give the dog a wag if you want or something like that. It's it's just nice that they put in that little extra touch. So, you know, the, the uh, hyenas and the Joker himself, I think they did a great job with the articulation. All right, now it's time to take a look at the accessories for the Joker. Now, as with the other figures, he comes with some pamphlets here. These are not specific to the figure itself. They are just kind of an advertisement for other figures you'll find in the series. And a little bit on how to use the figure stand and how to attach some of the pieces. Got your figure stand here stamped with the Joker. That's cool. And then we've got a hand here, a set of hands that's good for gripping the gun that comes with the figure. This is the gun. It's just a very simple matte black paint job. I would have appreciated a little bit of extra paint on this, but I can kind of understand versus the more stylized Batman gun why they chose to go with just a basic paint job for that. Here's <clears throat> how the gun fits into the hand as with the other figures. Very easy slips right in. You got yourself the trigger finger there going right into the grip. Again, I really like how they've designed those to all work very simply. So that's the gun holding hand. He also comes with a pair of slightly open fists where you can see he's got a little bit of grip there in case you wanted to put in some other kind of uh, blunt instrument or something like that. Uh, and then the figure itself comes with a pair of fists, so you get three pairs of hands total. Now, by far the coolest accessory he comes with are his two hyenas. He's got his open-mouthed one and his closed-mouthed one. And as we've looked at in the sculpt and the paint, these figures, they did a really good job with them. They made these great accessories. I mean, there's there's not much that can be said other than that these were awesome, and the fact that they included them in addition to some interchangeable hands in the gun, I mean, they went above and beyond for accessories for this figure. I feel like this figure and the Clayface figure are kind of the rock stars of this set, and if you're going to pick up uh, just one or two figures from the line, I would say those two are the ones to go for. All right, guys, so all in all, I think the figures were pretty awesome altogether. I mean, the original Batman animated series figures were were pretty cool. I really liked Bullock. I really liked Clayface. Talia, on the other hand, was kind of disappointing for me. Um, all around, she was fairly bland, and uh, especially compared to the other two, she just wasn't that fantastic. I would say overall, though, the paint across the board for mine was phenomenal. Um, I think I'd probably end up giving this, my, my trio, a 4 out of 5. So I really liked the figures from the new Batman Adventures. Uh, surprisingly enough, the anti-fire suit Batman was the weakest. I kind of felt like the sculpt was a little bit off. They got a little lazy with the paint on his gun. But I thought Firefly was really cool. They did a great job with the paint there. Great paint all across the board, actually, especially on the Joker. Joker figure's the standout. If you're gonna get one of the three of the figures, you would absolutely have to get the Joker. He's got hyenas, he's got a gun. He has a super articulated head, really awesome figure. Firefly's worth picking up too. Anti-fire suit Batman, uh, it depends. If you're a fan of Batman, if you like the design, go for it. Otherwise, I think he just looks a little bit weird. 
I'd say get Clayface too, because he's awesome. Yeah, I was pretty happy about Clayface. I was a little bit jealous that you got Joker, honestly. <laughs> but you got Clayface, yeah, so I think so. that makes up for it, because they're yeah. both rock stars. If you're going to get two figures from the set, get those ones. They're awesome. Yeah, fantastic choices. And honestly, all around, I think that this series is worth collecting, because, I mean, the original series is amazing. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. And make sure, guys, to let us know what you think in the comments, or if you've collected these and had some opinions. Lay those down, too. We want to know.